All right, everybody. How are we doing? So I call my class an energizing chair yoga class. So it's going to be something that we're going to move the energy around and we're going to do some things that are a little lively and some things that are a little calming. We are in mountain pose, so I want everybody to look down at their feet. They should be parallel, the toes facing forward, the knees over the ankles. Good. And take your shoulders and roll them up and back and down a few times. Okay. And then everybody close your eyes. Place your hands on your thighs with your palms facing down. And then just breathe, right? And I want you to have a little conversation with yourself right now and just ask yourself, you know, how am I feeling, right? Am I tired, right? Am I sore? Am I painful somewhere? Is something rigid that I'm holding? Is my mind like, whoa, way over there on the shopping list or something like that? Just kind of notice what your state is right now. Maybe we'll revisit it at the end of class and just kind of notice if there's any shift in that. And now turn your palms facing upward towards the ceiling. So the palms are just gently cupped a little bit. Fingers are curled just a little. And then just notice that shift. Did that little movement shift your energy in any way? This is the receptive mudra. And then place your palms again down on your thighs. This is the calming and the grounding. We're going to do ch three chamber breathing. So I want you to take your fingertips of both hands and place them right underneath your collarbone. It's like you're fanning that place right underneath the collarbone. Thumbs are maybe even close to your armpits. And I want you to take your next inhale breath just into this area. See which fingers you're moving when you're doing the breathing in and out. Notice if your thumbs are moving. This is the very top of your lungs. Try not to move any other part of you, but just the very top. Maybe the clavicle moves, maybe the arms move a little bit, the chest moves. Now place your fingers fanned again on each side of your rib cage. So just imagine you can take your fingertips right in between each little rib bone so you've got your intercostals you're kind of connecting to. And then start to breathe into this chamber, like an accordion. Notice the movement. Is it an outward movement? Is it a forward movement? Is it both? And then place your fingers fanned on your belly so the fingertips are pressing in towards the belly button softly. And then breathe into that space, that chamber. And then placing your hands back on your laps, we're going to breathe into all three chambers. No special order. You're just going to take a nice deep breath, expanding the collarbones, expanding the rib cage, and expanding the belly, the biggest breath. Life force coming in. Exhale, just let everything soften. Those of you who have a block behind you, see if you now you can start to have the expansion in the back side of you so you can really feel that the block is kind of pressing in a little differently on those back ribs. So as we're breathing like this, we're breathing in that beautiful prana, that life force that we all want so much more of. That life force is intelligent. So if you have any aches or pains or injuries, just know that that prana is traveling right to that spot. And then bring your breath back to its natural state. Soften your elbows against your side. Soften your shoulders if they've tend to gotten a little tighter. And now we'll start to do some neck movements. So take a breath here and exhale, tick, tuck your chin downward. So only thing that's gonna move is your neck. So slowly lower your chin down. I'm gonna stretch into the very top of the cervical spine. So just breathe. Remember if there's any sharp pain, any kind of stabbing pain, you're gonna back off on that. But just breathe as if you can breathe space and stretch the back of your neck muscles. Wide and deep. 
and then move your chin two inches to the right. So it's almost like you're traveling along your collarbone to the right. Hold that stretch there. And then take two nods. We're going to inhale, lift the head up a little bit with the eyes still closed. And exhale, tuck the chin down a little bit. So we're working into the muscle fibers of the trapezius muscle now. So as you nod up and down, we're going to stretch those muscles. Now turn your head two inches more to the right. A little off to the side of that collarbone. And then we're going to nod twice, inhaling up and exhaling down. And again, inhaling up and exhaling down. Good. Maybe two more inches or just as far as you can go. Be gentle. And again, two nods. Inhale up. Exhale, tuck the chin downward. And again, up. Chin down. Roll it back to the center and take a pause here. So just take this pause. Come back to neutral. Make sure to drop the shoulders again if they've creeped up a little. And here we go. Two inches to the left. Find that little group of muscle fibers. And here we go. Two nods. So one of my dear friends is a Massage therapist, neuromuscular therapist, actually, and then go to another two inches. And he said these tight little muscle fibers, they're like strings of a violin. And some of those little strings of fibers just got wound a little tighter than the others. So you're going to find those as you move your neck in just a little different directions. Go another two inches and just go up and down. So this is all exploratory. You're just kind of noticing the angles that feel good ones that need stretch and then the chin comes back down and comes to the center good roll your right ear over to your right shoulder and lift your left arm out to the side halfway between your hips and your shoulders your palms are facing down your fingers are spread wide we're going to lift the palms up and we're going to lift the chin up so this is your SEM muscle sternocleidomastoid right here in the front of your neck palm is down chin tucks down like you're saying that nodding motion so the chin goes down and here we go up again. So the chin is up, the palm is up. So shoulder rotation, neck, and then the chin goes down. Good. And last time, inhale, coming up. And then exhale, chin and the palm come back down to the center. And we'll take it to the other side. Left ear, left shoulder. Right arm reaches out. Spread your fingers. On your inhale, the palm is up and your chin is up. Opening up the arms, stretching the chest. Good. Exhale, coming down, tucking the chin, palm is facing the floor. So we're actually re using your rotator cuff here. So inhale, the rotation of your shoulder upward. And then exhale, the chin is coming down. That's your levator scapula there. Oh, that feels so good. One more time. Inhale, coming up. And exhale, coming down. Hand and chin back to the center. This time, take your hands behind your head, interlace them. And we're going to take the elbows a little closer together. So it's just a very tender little stretch downwards. So the elbows get a little closer. The palms bear a little more weight. And we're going to use the thumbs now and take the thumbs right underneath the occiput, which is that nice little ledge there, the, the bottom of your skull. Take your thumbs now and pull your skull up away from your spine. Just pull. This is traction for that beautiful long neck of yours. We're going to stretch those neck muscles. So take a big breath here. Inhale. And exhale. Now lift your head up, open your eyes, and take your elbows all the way out to the side. So I call this one the headrest push. So imagine you're in your car and you're pushing your head against the headrest. And then the headrest is kind of pushing your head forward. So keep pushing. This strengthens those cervical muscles. Good. And then tuck your chin all the way down, round and stretch a little bit. And then bring your head all the way back up to neutral. This time, fingertips come to your shoulders. And we're going to roll the shoulders up and around. Oh, I hear some popping and clicking on that one, huh? And let's go up and forward a little bit. Good. And then we're going to do some elbow kisses. So watch. Elbows go out. Elbows kiss. Mwah. Yeah. Go out. <laughs> and they kiss. Mwah. One more time. Out. And they come together. Now, this time, arms are all the way out. Watch your neighbor on this. This is the life force reach. I always tell everybody I can see how much life force you have in your body by how you can reach and stretch. Good. Now, fingertips come up to the ceiling. Push the palms away. Ooh, that's the fascia. Yeah, loving that. Fingertips down towards the floor. One more time as they're pushing up. Palms pushing away. And fingertips go down. Good. And then gently release it and then just roll it out. Whatever feels good. Do a lot of these little wiggle things, right? Good. And then just roll it forward. Good. I'm going to shake your hands. Okay, so open and close your fingers. Open and close. 
little work for arthritis. So I call this one just joints because we're going to work just the joints of our arms. So as we open and close, right, we're working those nice little digits, and then we're going to rotate the wrist and open and close the hands. So this is a little dexterity, right? And then we're going to pump those elbows in and out, rotate the wrist, and move the hands in and out. Good. And then we're going to get the elbows to go back, right? And so we're going to twist a little bit. We're going to pull. We're going to stretch. Good. And then we got to do the hula off to one side. Good. And then we go the hula to the other side. And then we do the wave like this, just side to side. Wave it, wave it, wave it. Yeah. <laughs> hallelujah, hallelujah. Okay, here we go. Shake it out up here. Shake it, shake it, shake it. Shake it down here. And make your hands look really blurry. Look at your fingers. Do you see them? They're so blurry, right? Give them a good shake. Good for arthritis. Loosen everything up. Take it over to one side. Shake it. In the middle. Other side, shake it. Keep them loose. Come back to the middle. And then when you sit back, put your palms facing up. Maybe close your eyes. Oh, yeah. Everybody feel that little prana going on? Feet are flat on the floor still. <sighs> Good. Then gently open your eyes. So we'll give the arms and hands a little rest. Let's work the feet a little bit. So let's say left foot comes up, and we're just going to point and flex here. Yeah, just point and flex. If you have your socks off, we want to just spread your toes a little bit as you do that. Good. And then we're going to take the other side, and we're going to point and flex there. And then we're going to bring both legs up. We're going to go wide, and then we're going to rotate inward. And then we're going to rotate outward. Good. And then bring them back together and shake them out. Okay, so we're going to do a little movement for uh, finger dexterity as well as for our memory and our coordination. So I learned this one from a speech therapist. And basically she says whenever we speak and we do tactile motions that match with our speaking, we improve our memory. It use a neural pathways for our memory. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the left hand and we're going to touch each fingertip as we say a word pattern. So we're going to start easy with colors, okay? So I'll say it the first time around, then you guys will repeat. So it'll be red, orange, purple, green. Okay, here we go. Put one finger at a time. Red, orange, purple, green. One more time. Red, orange, purple, green. Backwards. Green, purple, orange, red. Again. Green, purple, orange, red. Red. Good. All right. Good job. Now we're going to do the other hand, and we're going to do something very arbitrary. Okay, so this won't be a grouping. This is going to be arbitrary, and I'm just going to look around the room. Cement. Tequila. Toyota. Eyebrows. <laughs> okay, ready? First one. Cement. Tequila. Toyota. One more. Cement. Tequila. Toyota. Eyebrows. Backwards. Eyebrows. One more. All right, good job. All right. So at the end of class, we're going to go back and see how much we remember. Oh, yeah, that's really when we get into the memory busters, right? Okay, so let's take it out. Um, it's scoot up a little bit. You can take your uh, box away from you because we're going to do a little bit of uh, back work and shoulder work. So I like to do this periodically in class to, to uh, teach people how their rotator cuff muscles work. So everybody take one arm out. Let's say left arm. So we're all the same. Palms up. Palms down. Take your other hand and take it to your shoulder, and I want you to feel the rotation of your shoulder, right? So you can feel those little muscles moving, those tendons moving in your shoulder. So these are the muscles and the ligaments, the structure of your rotator cuff, right? And then take it to the other side and just hold on so you can kind of feel that. Anybody feel any popping and clicking in there? Okay, so sometimes that happens because as we saw in some of the pictures, the ligaments and the tendons wrap around really a lot into these um, shoulder, uh, joint and hip area. So that's sometimes the rubbing of that. Good. Now we're going to work the capsule. So now we've got both arms out. We're going to look to the left, turn the left palm up, and look to the right, turn the right palm up, and the left palm goes down. Good. So we're just flipping back and forth. Good, back and forth. Now, next time you look to the left, the left palm is up, we're going to reach the left arm out to the side. Come back to the center, flip, and we're going to reach the right arm out to the side. Good. So now what we're doing is making space in the, the socket, right? So I'm getting a lot of any compression in that joint. We're going to open it up. Good. All the way over and all the way over. Good. Now come back to the center, palms face up. Reach them all the way up, touch them at the top in prayer, bring them all the way back down. This is called namaste hands. This is for strengthening the bones and the muscles of the arms. So what we want to do is drop the shoulders but lift the elbows. Okay, so when we do that, we're going to get the biceps and the triceps involved. So we're going to push the hands over to the right as far as you can. Keep pushing. So that's an isometric or isotonic, actually, because we're moving. And turn the head the opposite way. 
Good, push to the center. Remember the resistance, like you're moving through mud. Push over to the left, and we're gonna turn the head to the right. Good, make sure your feet are still planted on the floor. I see some people cattywampus. Come all the way back to the center. Good, take your thumbs, touch your heart. Take your fingertips down towards the floor. Look down with your neck, stretch the back of your neck. That's your carpal tunnel. Good, bring your fingertips up, twirl them inward towards you. So the fingertips are moving in towards your heart, interlace them. Notice which pinky's on the top. We're gonna stretch it all the way out. Bring it all the way up. Oh, there's some crunching going on there. Good, and big stretch all the way back. Bring your hands back to the heart and we'll do it one more time. Opposite way, we're gonna start. So push over to the left, turn the head to the right. Elbows remain up if you can, shoulders down. Good, push to the other side. Biceps and triceps here, good. And then coming all the way back to the center, thumbs touch. Fingertips twirl down, so working that dexterity there. Fingertips twirl inward now, and remember when you interlace, it's the other pinky that's on the top. Then we'll stretch it out, and we'll reach it up. And then we'll release all the way down, good. And then roll it out, good, roll it out, and come forward, all the way forward. Good. So we're going to do a little lateral bend. So this one incorporates the upper body and the lower body, and it's called the hip glide. It's a movement that I learned in a workshop. It was a mat pose, and I loved it so much that I want to turn it into a chair pose. So it does the same movement. It gets into the QL muscle, which is a nice lateral bend. So what we're going to do is we're going to move the knees over to the left. So we're all going to be facing towards that way. Probably most of us are. That left knee is going to be out in the front. You're going to bring your left cheek to the uh, chair, but the right cheek is off with the right knee facing down towards the floor. So your quad is nice and long, right? And you have your toes tucked. So that's like your kickstand. Hold on to the chair with your left hand and your right hand comes to your right shoulder. Good. So the movement is going to be the right elbow down and the right hip up. Like we're trying to kiss those joints right there, hip bone and elbow joint. Then we're going to lift the elbow up, drop the hip down lower than the seat and lean into the chair sideways. Oh yeah, here we go, we're gonna use our breath now. Inhale, we're gonna contract the QL. Exhale, we're gonna lift it and lean and stretch into that. Feel good? Yes, inhale, crunch it. Exhale, lift, lean into that. The next one we're gonna hold, so inhale, we're gonna touch. Exhale, we're gonna lift, the elbows up. Now, shoulder issues, you can stay here or you can take that arm up and really reach it. Hook it way over the ear if you want to. A big breath here, everybody, inhale. And exhale, good, bring your hand back to your shoulder and we're just gonna gently pivot to the other side. So watch your balance as you pivot. We're gonna take that right leg out in front. Remember, just the cheek of the right butt cheek is on the chair. Left knee down, left toes tucked and the left hand to the shoulder. So here we go, contract the muscle. So inhale, we're taking that contraction, elbow down, hip down, exhale, drop the hip low. Take it low, lift the, lift the elbow up, good. Inhale, contract, exhale, lift, up, and again, inhale, contract, exhale, lift. We're going to hold it here, so remember if you've got shoulder issues, you're staying here, otherwise you're going to reach that arm and really breathe long, long stretch for the body. Inhale, and exhale, good, come all the way back, hand to the shoulder, and when we come all the way back, we're going to do a nice little forward bend to compensate. So we're going to take the legs wide, we're going to take the hands to the laps, and we're going to inhale, draw the palms towards your hip bones and push your chest forward. Good. Exhale, take your palms over your kneecaps and tuck yourself backwards. Oh yeah. Inhale, roll it forward, squeeze your shoulders, good. Exhale, tuck it down. And one more time, inhale, coming up. And exhale, tucking down. Good, coming back to neutral. We're gonna take the left hand into a hitchhiker thumb, right? Hold on to the chair with the right hand and we're gonna crisscross the knuckles over to the right knee. We're gonna do rainbow pose. So we're gonna move one finger at a time, starting with the index finger, and we're gonna make an arc behind us. So it looks like this. One, two, three, four. As far back as you can, look at your palm. And then bring yourself back together, I mean, to the front, and we're gonna go pinky first. Four, three, two, one, knuckles down. Here we go again, inhale, one, two, three, four, release. And then take an exhale breath. And then turn your head the other way, nod twice, once and twice. Good, look back at the hand, the pinky comes back in first. Four, three, 
two, and one. Good, now we'll switch. Hold on to the chair with the left hand. Hitchhike your thumb over to the other side. Big stretch, so inhale, big arc. One, two, three, four. Palm is open, backwards. Four, three, two, and one. Knuckles touch. We'll add a little a head turn, so one, two, three, four. Good. Turn your head, nod twice, once and twice. Look back at the hand, and here we go. Pinky in first, four, three, two, and one. Good, come all the way back. Good, bringing both hands now to your thighs, we're gonna do a little forward bending. So take your hands, you're gonna slide them so the palms almost touch your hip bones, right? Arch forward, and we're gonna lean, like we're le uh, looking over the edge of a cliff. So just stay here. Keep the spine nice and long and straight. Now start to slide your hands over towards your knees, maybe even over your kneecaps, and your back is still long and straight. Take a breath here. Good, now bring both hands over to your left knee. So you're gonna take that right hand on top of the left knee, stretching into that side of your back. Now you're gonna take your right arm and reach out in front. Maybe you can touch a neighbor's chair, I don't know. Open and close your fingers, good. Bring that hand back to the knee and then gently move it on over to the right side. So both hands over to the right knee. And then we'll reach and you're breathing. Make sure you can breathe. Remember that breath is always your guide. If you can't take a big breath, you're pushing yourself too much. Good. And then bring your hand back. Now one hand to each knee. We're going to inhale, come all the way up, all the way up. Good. And then bring your feet back together. Good. And then a little apanasana in the chair. So just bringing a knee in like this. So if you ever have low back pain, one of the best things you can do is just bring your knee to your chest. You can feel it. You can feel your low back stretching, right? And if it feels okay, you can even kiss your knee because you love your knee so much. You're like, Mwah! like that. You don't even have to touch it, right? Just Mwah! Give your whole back a nice little stretch. Good. Good. All right. So now we're going to do something for our mind and body coordination. Okay? And this is called picking fruit. Some of you maybe have done this with me before. Everybody's feet flat on the floor? Are we cattywampus at all? How's that right foot? Everything good? All right. So we're going to do our reaches. So um, take the right arm, oops, left arm forward. And we're going to move it forward and back into the socket just to get that nice rotation of that shoulder joint. Good. Next time it's back down, we're going to lift it up and we're going to pick a fruit. So just grab the fruit, pick it, take it out to the side, drop it in the basket. Good. Here we go again. Reach, pick, out, drop. Other side. Reach up, maybe look up this time. Good. Pick it, take it out to the side, drop it. And again, reach, pick, out, and drop. Okay. Now we're going to give it out to somebody. So everybody reach, first hand, pick, out in front, give it away. Good, here we go again. Reach, pick, in front, give it away, and other side. Reach, pick, in front, give it away. And again, reach, pick, in front, give it away. Now we're gonna drop it on the floor. First arm, watch, reach, pick, we dropped it, we gotta lean down, pick it up, pick it up, pick it up. Oh yeah, bring it back in. Here we go again, reach, pick, we dropped it, gotta pick it up, stretch the back. Good, other side. Reach, pick, and we dropped it. Good. And again, reach, pick, and we got to pick it up. Now we're going to reach sideways. We're going to grab the low branch. So take one arm way over there and reach. Reach, grab it, take a bite. Good. Reach, pick, take the bite. Good. Sound effects are good. Reach, pick, the bite. And again, reach, pick, and the bite. Okay, now it's going to be the pattern, both arms. Okay, so you guys remember it? Up, out, up, forward, up, down, crisscross, bite. Here we go. <laughs> Reach, pick, out, drop. Remember where your palms are, right? Reach, pick, in front, palms open. Good. Reach, pick, to the floor, we go. Good. Back, crisscross both arms. Reach, pick. <laughs> all right, since you guys did so good on that, we're going to alternate. Yeah. Yes, we are, until everybody in the room gets it, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to reach up. One arm's going to go out and drop it in the basket. That means the palm is down. The other arm's going to go out in front, and we're going to open and give it away, okay? So we're going to keep the pattern until everybody gets it. Here we go. Reach, pick. Doesn't matter which one. Watch your palms. Okay, good. Look at you. Good. I have to think about that. Okay, good. Keep going. How are we doing? I'm looking around. Adele, you got it. Okay. Reach. Oh, such pressure in a chair yoga class. Good. And then reach, pick, and double bite. 
All right, good. Shake it out a little bit. All right, so we're going to mix it up a little bit, and we're going to do a, a nice, slow, meditative um, dance. Okay? So everybody ready? Legs are a little wide, you guys, because we're going to be swaying. Okay, you're just going to follow me. That's the wave. Now this is to the heart. Watch. To the heart. Open the heart. Sun slipping slowly over the mountains. And me looking into your eyes. Good. Okay, coming back. Let's do the wave again. I want this feeling always to linger. Now we're going to do a big sun circle. Watch. Up. And then sway. Come all the way back to the heart. Like a hug. And now only the right arm is going to go out to the side. Four times. In this world filled with heavenly light, everything here is all right. And then the wave again. Soft for the joints. To the heart. Midsummer Open the heart. Here in the always, your loving faces live in my heart. The wave again. Moments of beauty have brought us and now a big together, sun circle. and nothing can take that apart. Back to the heart, right arm. Gold shades. In this world filled with heavenly light, everything here is all right. In a big sun circle. In this world Sway. filled with heavenly light. Grab the light, everybody. Bring it down. Everything Back to your heart. So sit back, close your eyes for a moment, and just kind of bask in that nice energy that we just created, that little heart song for our beautiful spirit. And maybe just check in to feel how your body's feeling, and maybe just notice your mind and where it traveled off to. Find your breath again. Yeah, gently open your eyes. So take your chair so that the back of the high part of the chair is in front of you. Watch your neighbor. Maybe if everybody can face the same way, we're in good shape. So maybe the seat can face those double windows. Okay, so we're going to do um, a downward facing dog. So since our body's a little warmed up, our body's more um, open to stretching. So we're going to inhale the arms up, reach them up. Exhale, bring them down, hold on to the chair. And then walk yourself all the way back, downward facing dog. So the back's going to be long and straight, and the knees will be bent. So for sure, bend those knees. It's not about the hamstrings on this one. So what we want to imagine, right, is that our torso and our back is parallel to the floor. If it is or if it isn't, it doesn't matter. So that's the imagination here. If your shoulders are like, no way, Jose, it's not happening, then walk yourself forward and bend your elbows a little bit and still create that nice length in your spine. Couple of breaths here. Anybody with any kind of disc damage, especially discs 
that are like pinched or bulged. Just imagine what we're doing now. Natural traction. Every exhale pulls the spine longer. You want to grow a little taller, just breathe into that spine. Exhale, stretch the spine a little bit longer. One more breath cycle. Good. Now look at your thumbs. We're going to come all the way up and we're going to do up dog. So that was down dog, now up dog. So stand on your tippy toes, hold on to your chair, and arch yourself backwards. You can keep your chin neutral. Good. And then bring your toes, I mean your heels back down. Heels down, toes up. Stretch the back of your calves and your Achilles. Good. Now up to the tippy toes again. The right arm's going to reach up. This is Salabhasana, right? Good. Bringing your hands down. Rock to your heels. Toes are up. And then the other side. Inhaling. Left arm is up. Palms facing in. And then coming all the way down and rocking to your heels. Stay rocked to your heels and your toes are up and bring your right arm into cactus. We're going to waddle on over to the right. So keep waddling. Hold it. This is a test for Alzheimer's, which is really kind of amazing, huh? Walk to the center, switch your hand, and go to the other side. So they do a lot of interesting balance challenges when they're checking people for Alzheimer's, and this is one of them. Come all the way back down. Hold on to your chair, rock to your toes one more time, up to the toes, and then flat-footed. Good. All right, so everybody bring the chair in front of you so you're facing me. And I've been telling you I was going to promise to talk about what muscles are good for balance and for strengthening your hips. Remember Marilyn when she had her knees caved in like that and they said that her hip muscles weren't strong enough? So let's visit what hip muscles we're talking about. Let's take the left foot out to the side and hold it. Now when that left foot goes out to the side, this is a very interesting thing. You're going to watch to make sure that that foot is not pronated outward, right? So if it is, I want you to go slightly pigeon-toed, just slightly. Everybody put their hand on the outer left hip right here. Do you feel it? Do you feel this muscle? Lift your hip, um, foot away a little bit more. Oh yeah, you feel that? This is your gluteus medius and minimus, okay? This is the muscle we're talking about. These are the hip stabilizer muscles. Good, come back and let's take it to the other side. Right foot out. So if it's like easy peasy, like I'm not feeling anything, then you gotta lift it up a little bit, right? Your hand is to the side so you feel this muscle engage. These muscles are in the shape of a pizza slice. And there's two of them, one on top of each other. Those are the ones that are going to keep your hips in their place. Solid. Good. Come all the way back. Now, remember we talked about strengthening muscle? We're going to stretch it now by doing this interesting skiing. I call this skiing. Like we're slaloming down the slope, right? So the hips are going out. We're looking behind us. It's a little twist. Knee bends. Good. Good. All right. So now we're going to do the triple hinge. So we're going to take that leg out again, the right leg. I mean left leg, sorry. Okay. And then we're going to slowly move through mud, like we're moving through mud, and we're going to pull it back in. Slowly. The foot is flexed. Where do you feel it? Inner thighs? Adductors. That's the other matching pair of your balance muscles. Good. Pull it out, and then slowly, slowly pull it back in. Good. Next time it's out, we're going to go um, penguin feet. That means heels and toes out. Pull in slow, slow. Piriformis. That's where it is right there. Yeah. External hip rotator. Good. Go out. Pull all the way in slow if you can. You guys feel it in the inner butt? Behind your butt kind of? Yeah. Good. And then come out one more time. Pigeon toed. Pigeon toed. Slowly pull in. Where are you feeling it? Outer hip right here. And one more time. And pull it all the way back in. Oh, we got to do some skiing on that one, huh? So that whole series wakes up those muscles, right? You feel like, whoa, I didn't even know I had those muscles to begin with. But those are the muscles that keep us strong holding ourselves in, on one leg. So now here we go to the other side, right foot. We're going to come in twice, right, slow, like we're moving through mud. Actually, one of my students, uh, teachers calls it moving through peanut butter, which I kind of like that better. Mm -hmm. So out, move through peanut butter, get those inner thighs to engage. Good. And then we go out again, and then we're going to go penguin feet. And we're going to bring the heel in first. That's a deep, deep stretch. I know that you guys feel that. Good. And then slow coming in. And then the last one, we're going out, and we're going pigeon-toed. Gets the gluteus medius. And then going out. And then we're going back in. Good. And then the skiing feels so super delicious. Yeah. And if you wake up tomorrow or the next day and you're sore, you'll know. You'll know that you woke up those hip muscles. Good. Now bring your hands to your hips. Your, uh, your stance is just a little bit wider, and we're going to do the hula hoop. The hula hoop. Good. The other way, the hula hoop. Okay, so that was for strengthening those hip muscles. Now we're going to do something for um, creating some mobility in the hips. So we're doing something called the celebrity moves. Okay, I got this from Earhart. Do you remember this one? 
Okay, so the first one is called Elvis Moves His Pelvis, okay? <laughs> so we're going to take the left foot and we're going to point it out to the side like a 45 degree angle. The toes and the balls of the feet are on the floor, right? The heel is up. The back knee is bent a little bit and the front knee is bent a little bit. And this actually has its foundation in Tai Chi, which we move the joints in a circular motion. So what we're going to do is we're going to roll it around. Roll the pelvis. Yeah. I always like to watch the guys do this one. Yeah. Good. And then roll it the other way and then take the left arm and then roll it with you, right? Get the whole joints on the left side just to move. So you know back in the 50s this was illegal to do, right? So <laughs> good. Good. Uh, yeah, you got it. Good. Okay, let's go. Other side. Right foot points out. Remember, you've got to bend the knees, right? That's that softening because we're doing some lateral rotation for the hip and the knee. So we're going round and round. Round and round. That's that pelvic move that we say is so important to keep. Good. The other way, and when you do, we're going to take the arm and we're just going to roll it around, almost like that little teacup kind of feel, right? Just roll it around. Yeah. Feeling loose. Good. All right. That's, so that's Elvis. The next one is Marilyn Monroe. One of my favorites, especially for this age group, because she's on her high heels, okay? So your hands are on your hips, and it's this movement up and then down, right? That little quadratus lumborum, right? Jacking the hip up. We're up on our tippy toes on that side. Get those hips to move out, right? Those are the gluteus muscles. We're stretching. Good. Good. All right. Um, now it's Tom Jones, okay? So Tom Jones, one hand on your hip. The other hand's going to hold the microphone. And Tom Jones wasn't as wild as Elvis was, so he just goes like this, okay? And he's singing, it's not unusual to be loved by anyone. Does anybody remember him? You guys are too young. Go. The other way, round and round. Round and round. Yes. And Delilah, I heard he sings that song, but I don't know that one. Good. Roll it around. So that's like the hula hoop, right? The last one is Michael Jackson. We're going to put the left palm on the belly. He usually goes lower, but we won't do that, okay? <laughs> and then the other hand goes behind you with the palm facing out, and basically it's the pelvic tilt, right? That movement, yeah. Anybody could do the moonwalk with that? I don't know. <laughs> good. All right, so that's good. All right, shake it out. Very good, shake it out. All right, now bring your chair out in front of you, and we're going to do now uh, a typical warrior series. So this will be warrior one. The right foot is going to stay where it's at. The left foot is going to step back. And remember that back foot slightly edged, 45 degrees. And when you bend your knee, we're going to make sure we see our big toe. That's the most important alignment. The big toe means the knee is not over-tracking the ankle. And then see your kneecap if it's in between the second and third toe. Bring your left arm into cactus. Yeah, good. Bring your right arm into cactus if you can. Good. Hold that. Beautiful. Take your arms all the way out to the side. Bring your arms out in front like you're holding that ball again. And then reach your arms all the way up. Turn your pinkies out and your thumbs in. Turn your thumbs in and your pinkies out. See what happens to your shoulder, good. Now bring both hands to the chair. We're gonna do three push-ups. This is important to keep those elbows nice and snug to your ribs. So here we go, take a breath. And exhale, we're going to pull down, push up. Inhale, push up, triceps. Exhale, going down, biceps. Inhale, coming up strong. Last one, exhale down. Inhale, straighten it out. Bring that back foot forward to meet the front. Shake it out one leg, shake it out the other leg. Here we go, to the other side. So warrior to the left, left foot stays in the front, right foot steps in the back. Make sure your hands are on the chair so you're squared forward. Good, now bend your left knee. And we're going to bring that right arm up into cactus arms. So good. Shoulder opener, chest expander. If your balance is good today, you can bring that other arm into cactus. Otherwise, hold on. Good. Nice and strong. Arms spread all the way out to the side. Remember that life force reach. Oh, lots of life force in this group. Good. Bring your arms out in front. Inhale, lift up. Pinkies in, thumbs out. How does that feel? Opposite way. Thumbs in, pinkies out. Good. And then the arms come back down to the chair, and it's last three push-ups. Here we go. Take a breath. Exhale, going down. Inhale, coming up. Exhale, going down. Inhale, up. And last one. Exhale, down. Those are your triceps right there working for you. When you inhale up, you're coming all the way up. Good. 
and then come step forward. Keep the chair by the side of you and everybody face towards the front of me with their chair on the side because we're going to do another little tai, tai Chi. So I like to use Tai Chi because it's very kind and gentle on the joints but it also challenges your balance. So this one we're going to have the leg closest to the chair staying there and the other leg is going to be in that 45 degree angle kind of similar to what we, we did in the, in the Elvis movement. So the back leg can be slightly turned if you need to and bend the knee and the front knee is bent. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to shift the weight forward on the ball of the foot and then shift the weight backward to the heel and both knees are still a little bent. That's important. So there's never a locking of the knee. You're shifting forward and you're going back. You can shift forward and lift the heel or you can shift forward and not lift the heel. But when you go back, the heel is down. Good. So that's the movement. Okay, so this is the typical Tai Chi stance. If you've ever done Tai Chi, this is what they do. This works the knee joints in very safe ways. Now we're going to add the arms. So everybody go back on your heels, take your palm that's facing outward like this, and you're going to push, and then you're going to pull. And remember, it's that resistance again, right? That you're moving through peanut butter. That's what's going to create the strength in your arms, right? Push, and then pull, and then maybe both arms. So that's why this is kind of a nice little movement for balance because you control, right? You control how much you lean forward and how much you lean backwards and how much you're bending your knees or not. Good. Everybody come back, you're on your heel, take that palm now, we're going to go circle of the earth. So it goes circling around like the equator. You're using your legs the exact same way. Round and round, good. Good for those knee joints, good. Let's go the other way and maybe both arms, you decide. Otherwise you're holding on. Good. Good, come back, we're on our heel, we're going to hold on to the chair. Circle of the sun, the palm is open and we go up and around. So when we use these big muscles of our body, which is the arms and the legs, we burn energy. Good. Let's go the other way and maybe the, both arms, maybe not. Maybe just hold on. Good. Feel it on those quads. Good. Coming all the way back down. Shake it out a little bit and we'll take it to the other side. You can actually move the chair if you want to. If you've got space. Okay. So Tai Chi stance. We're standing on the leg that's closest to the chair. The other leg points out 45 degrees. The toe is down. And then we're just going to shift back and forth. So we're just going to find that first. So the very first time I did this, actually the first couple times I did this, I was always locking my back knee, which was not good, right? So you want to have this kind of fluidity of you're, you're moving the weight side to side, front and back, without locking the knees in any way. Good. Everybody back on the heel, the palm right open. Push out, pull in. So Tai Chi means working with the energy. So even now you can think about maybe both hands pushing out something, Pulling in, right? Pushing away, pulling in. Strong arms, good, one more time. Pushing out, pulling in. You're back on your heel, here we go. Circle of the earth, round you go. Nice shoulder rotation, good. Round, and then we'll go the other way. Both arms are, hold on, you decide. Always given these options so you feel safe. Good. The next time you're back on your heel, last one, circle of the sun. Palm is open and we're going up and around. And remember, if your shoulder is getting sore, then you just make baby circles, right? You don't have to do big swoopy ones. Good. And then we'll go the other way, up and around. And up and around. Good. One more time. Very good. Come back in. Oh, shake it out a little bit. All right, so we're going to do a little goddess series. I mentioned to you that is really actually one of my most favorite standing poses of all is goddess because it's probably one of the safest for our joints and the safest for our low back and our SI joint. So you want to have a nice uh, straddle so that your heels are in and your toes are out. And then we're just going to go up and down a few times. So it goes like this, up and down, up and down. So my ballerina's in the room. This is a plie, right? This is a plie. And this is an external hip rotator, so you should feel that in your inner butt, right? You can feel that when you go down. Good. Now we can add the arm. So we can just bend one arm, and then we can straighten it. Then we can bend it. And maybe we could do both, right? Bend and straighten. And one more time. Bend and straighten. Good. Bring your hands to the chair. I want you to pivot your feet. Keep them where they are, but the toes are facing forward. And we're going to do another uh, Tai Chi-oriented movement, and it's called the lasso. So what I want you to do first is shift over to the left as you bend your knee, come back to the center, shift over to the right. So it's that same idea, right? You're shifting back and forth, but the knees are just softly bent. Not much, just softly bent back and forth. Everybody got that? Feeling okay? 
All right, so that's the leg movement. Come back to center. This is the arm movement. So we'll do arms first and then we'll add it together. Left arm comes out in front and it's like a halo over your head. It swoops around like this and then it flings. So this is the lasso, right? Around and it flings. Good. And then this is what we do. All right, we bend the knee, we straighten it. Bend, straighten. Bend, straighten. Let's do the other side, okay? Let's swoop it around one time or two, right? That. And then when we're swooping, we're bending, right? And when we're straightening, we're straightening. Yeah, so that movement. Good, you guys got it. Okay, now both arms are out. We're gonna alternate right, left, right, left, okay? So here we go, right and then left. I call this the charger cheerleader movements. Good, <laughs> coordination, good. Both arms, both arms, both legs. Here we go. I like sound effects, good. One more. Good, all right, bring yourself back to the center. Walk, 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 and we're gonna do falling star. So your feet are a little bit um, more together, but not quite to dasana, okay? So we're gonna have the um, hips parallel, and we're gonna take the left hand down to the side of the body. So it's almost like a modified triangle if you think about it. So we're gonna slide that left hand down the body, and maybe the right hand comes to the right hip. Sideways, good. Right hand to the right shoulder. Maybe right hand all the way up. Oh, yeah. Good. Coming back all the way up. Here we go, other side. Right hand slides down. Lean first. Good. Hand to the shoulder. Oh, hand to the hip. I actually, I messed up, huh? Mm -hmm. Hand to the hip. Hand to the shoulder. All the way up. Big breath here. And exhale all the way down. Good, so that's falling star. This is called twinkling star, okay? So heel toe, heel toe, so your feet are parallel. This time we're gonna take the right foot out to the side and we're gonna hold it. Remember we've done this one before, so the right foot is hold slightly pigeon toed if you wanna get that gluteus a little deeper. And then we're gonna take the right arm up and then we're gonna shake and wiggle and let go of the hand and shake. That's twinkling star. Good, watch the balance, good. And then come all the way down. Ooh, how about a little skiing on that one? Yeah, good. Here we go, other side. Left foot goes out, slightly pigeon-toed. Good, shoot that left arm up. Balance, let go. Maybe the hand lets go, we're wiggling. Good, coming all the way down, and here we go, a oh, little sideways movement. Look behind you so that you really get the lower back, the upper back to twist, just look behind you. Good, and then bring your hands to your hips and a little hula hoop. Yeah, hula hoop. Good, go the other way. All right, so bring your chair in front of you. We're all gonna face the windows again. And we're gonna do our bend and salute. So this is like um, sunbird pose, if you think about it in a, in a mat class. We're gonna reach the right arm out in front with the thumb up and the palm facing inward. And then the left foot's gonna go out and back. And just hold that. Come back in and let's do the opposite. So left hand, right foot. And when you come back in, let's march. So you just bring one knee up and the other knee up. So I'm gonna give everybody a little test. This is really important, especially anybody who has low back pain. A lot of times we're, we don't have strong glute muscles. So if we don't have strong glute muscles, it, it creates a little bit more back um, tension. So we're gonna do this movement before we do the next series. Let's take the right foot back behind us so that the toenails are on the floor. Yeah, so you're stretching the front of your foot. Good, place your right hand on your butt, not your neighbor's butt, but the right hand on your butt, okay, right cheek. Lift your right foot off the floor about three or four inches and see if your glutes are firing or if they're not, it's probably your low back. So up and down a couple times, your toes down and up. So you should feel that glute muscle. So with many seniors and a lot of people who don't have strong glutes, they're gonna use their low back to do that. Good. Come back, let's try the other side. So we're gonna stretch the front of the foot. So remember, toenails on the floor. You can use a little bit of gravity here. So just stretch, let the, that nice arch get supported there. Hand on your butt cheek, and then just up and down, maybe two, three inches. Everybody feel their glutes? Mm -hmm. Good. I'm telling you, most of the time, the seniors don't feel that. Good, and when you come back, we're gonna march. That means it's almost like apanasana, right? The knee comes up and you're stretching your low back. Okay, so sunbird with bend and salute. So walk to your chair, the right arm's gonna come out in front and the left foot's gonna go back behind you. Good, salute with your right hand and bend your back foot like you're trying to kick your butt. Good, straighten out. Bend and salute. Straighten out. 
One more time, bend and salute, hold it, because you're gonna bend your right knee and you're gonna bend your left elbow. So you're gonna go down, down, down. Good, come up, up, up. And then straighten everything out. And then come back. Whew. Other side, last one, you guys. Left arm out, right foot back behind you. Bend and salute twice. So we're gonna bend and then straighten. And then bend and then straighten. Next time we bend it, and we're gonna keep it bent and we're gonna dip. So that's the right. Right elbow, left knee. Yeah, go down, come back up, straighten it out. Bring yourself all the way back to neutral and do a little marching. So marching is basically one-legged apanasana, right? If we bring that knee up as high as we can, we really get that low back to stretch. And you can hold on to the chair so you don't topple over. Good, come back to the side of your chair and we're gonna do tree pose. So since we started you know, bringing our awareness to balance, right? So everything about tree pose is the strength of our outer hip muscles, which we know now are gluteus medius and minimus, and our inner adductor muscles. Those are like the scaffolding, right? Around our standing leg. So we're gonna be right leg down, left leg comes into the instep or the calf. If you wanna go to the thigh, feel free to do that if you want to. Bring your hands to your heart. Now, if you're feeling wobbly, then you're just going to hold on to the chair. Good. Feeling good? Press the palms upward. Good. So this is a pine tree right here. Yeah. Let's make a palm tree. Open up. Good. What about a big oak tree? Big, broad. Yeah. Can you breathe? Are you guys breathing? And then all the way down. Good. Shake it out a little bit. And here we go. Other side. Left foot down. Make sure the toes are facing forward. We're going to lift up that leg. And remember the side of the hips. We don't want to be leaning into that side of the hip. We're, we want to pull that hip in. That leg is so straight. Those adductor muscles and those gluteus muscles are hugging in tight. Hands to your heart. And here we go. Pushing upward towards the sun. That's the pine tree again. How about the bonsai tree? Yeah. How about the bonsai tree in the wind? Yeah. Hoo, hoo, hoo. Challenge, challenge. Why not? If you wobble and you topple down, it's all good. We're just getting back up. Hoo, hoo, hoo. Good. And bring it all the way back to your heart center. Hoo. And then release it. Good. Shake it out a little bit. Come on down to the chair. Did I warm you up a little? Oh my gosh, you guys. Ooh, hoo, hoo. All right, so just take a little pause. Let's close our eyes and just, you can sit back in your chair, you can sit upright, doesn't matter. I just want you to take a pause and just close your eyes and find your beautiful breath again. And even place your hand on your heart like the Pledge of Allegiance. Just place your hand right there. Feel the warmth of your body. Feel the pounding of your heartbeat. This is vitality. This is that prana that's just moving around in the inside of you making you vibrant and alert. Just taking your time to settle in. So the reason why we get so hot and bothered in all those big movements is because we're using lots of energy to move those bones and muscles. And then place your hands on your laps. And then gently open your eyes. So we'll do a little hip opening and then we'll end it with a dance, okay? So we're gonna take, oh, if you can scoot up maybe, take the left leg, bring it up, and we're gonna circle around into that hip joint. Around and around we go. Good. Then we're gonna go the other way, around and around. And then we're gonna go open and do, uh, close, like we're opening and closing a door. Good. And then we're gonna come up and down like we're walking up the steps. Yeah, up and down. Good. Those are all the different range of motion for the hip joint. Now, the most important one, as we talked about before, is external rotation. So we're going to come into seated pigeon. The top foot is flexed, right? Left foot is flexed. The ankle goes on top of the knee. And then you're going to sit up tall. So it's that little pelvic tilt. So if you're rounded down, like into that bucket seat, right, that's not good for stretching the, the hip or the piriformis. So we've got to actually lift up on those two sit bones and a little pelvic tilt forward. Yeah. Good, so this one's called give and receive. So everybody take the palms facing up. We're gonna take a breath here, and we're gonna exhale, lean forward like you're trying to give somebody something. And then inhale, receive it. Bring your fingers together, clasp them, good. Exhale, give. Inhale, receive. And again, give, exhale, and inhale, receive. Last time we're gonna hold it. 
Exhale, give. Take a breath cycle here. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale, receive. Good. Grab a hold of that left leg. Hold it. Three soccer kicks so the arms can come up and cactus so I know you're not cheating. Okay, here we go. Three soccer kicks. So one, two, and three. Good. Come down. Shake it out a little bit. Okay, pigeon to the other side. So the left knee, uh, right knee's coming up. We're going to do a circle round and round. So we're going to warm up that hip joint. Remember that synovial fluid that comes right into that socket when we do that. Go round and round. And then we'll go in and out like the door hinge. And up and down like walking up the steps. Good. Squeezing. We learned that that's good for digestion, right? When we squeeze like that. Good. External rotation, ankle to the knee. Remember, the foot is flexed, just like in our pigeons when we do it on the floor. Make sure the bottom foot is not cattywampus. I like saying that word, you guys, so I do say it quite often. It's just a fun word, right? The other word I like is skedaddle, but I don't know a, a reason to use that very much. So, Okay, so the feet are flat, the toes are facing forward. Good. Sit up straight. What about the pelvis? Everybody got their pelvis a little bit tilted? Good. Give and receive. Here we go. Take a breath. Inhale. Exhale. Give it away. Inhale, pull it back. Exhale, give. Inhale, receive. Exhale, give. This is the balance that your yoga teachers need. And then receive. Good. Last time, exhale, give. And we're going to take a big breath here and hold. Inhale. Exhale. Receive back. Inhale, all the way back. And then release. Take that leg. So it's facing up towards the ceiling, the kneecap. And then bring your arms and cactus. Three soccer kicks. Once, flex the foot. Good. Two. Those are your hamstrings. Three. Good. And then shake it out. Okay. So we'll do a little um, Charleston. So bring the legs out a little wider. Maybe you can scooch up because we're in a little bit of a straddle. So we're going to work the inner and the outer thighs on this one. So bring your kneecaps together so you're rolling your big toes down and your little toes are off the ground. So everybody feel it? IT band stretch right here. Good. And then we're going to open up little toes down, big toes off. Yeah. Adductors. Good. And then when we come together, kneecaps, we're going to crisscross the arms. Big toes down. And then we're going to open up the arms and the little toes are down. Good. And we're going to do that a few times. Crisscross. Hands on to the kneecaps. We're doing the Charleston. I know you guys weren't born in the 20s, but it was a very popular pose in the 20s. A very popular dance. Okay. And now we're going to go a little faster just for the mind-body coordination. Yeah. And then we're going to stop and check our work. So stop. Let me check. Everybody looking good? All right, good. Walk it together. We're going to go the opposite way. So the heels are touching. We're going to open up the toes. So the big to uh, little toes are down, big toes are up. Knees wide, good. And then we bring the knees together. We're crisscrossing. And then we're opening up. And then we're crisscrossing. And then we're going to go like this. Really super fast, like I can't even see your hands. You know, like the magician in, in Las Vegas says, which cup is it under? Is it under the right or the left? Keep going, keep going, and stop. Oh, no. <laughs> All right, shake it out. Good. Okay, let's go back to our memory. Colors. Colors. Okay. Was it purple green? Okay, go backwards then. Good. Okay, let's try this one. Yeah, good. Good. So. Okay, did you say eyelashes? Go backwards though. Eyebrows. Tequila. Cement. Good. Okay, so why do I do that? Because, do you guys know what the uh, universal test for Alzheimer's is? Spelling the word world backwards. So, we're going to all do that with our fingers. Spelling the word world backwards. Here we go. D. L. R. O. W. Do it again. D. Good. So what I tell my seniors, if they ever get tested like that, take your hands underneath the table and do that fingertips because that's what helps. Because what you're correlating is the word, the location, and the fingertips, right? And so that's what screws everybody up in that one, okay? So now that's the cheat sheet, okay, for the Alzheimer's test. So we're going to end it with um, a little coordination and then a dance. So here we go. Uh, left foot's going to come up and point. Right hand's going to point with it. Oh, oh, left hand's going to point with it. Sorry, here I go mirroring, right? Screwing up. Okay, flex, point. Flex, point. Good. Okay, other side. Point and flex. Good. Easy peasy, huh? Okay, good. Okay, left foot points. 
left hand points, right foot flexes, right hand flexes. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Flip it. Flip it. Flip it. Easy. Now, the thing is, you, you can't think about it once you start. Okay? You got to get in the rhythm and then you just don't think about it. Stop. Check your work. Everybody got it? Okay, here we go. Shake it out. Okay, super deluxe version only for yoga teachers only. Here we go. Left foot points, left hand flexes. Right foot flexes, right hand points. And go for it. Don't think about it after you start, okay? Just be on automatic pilot. Good. Work in the joints. And stop and check your work. No. No. Oh, both pointing. Good. Shake it out. All right, good. Erase it. I always say erase it, right? Okay, last one is going to be a little dance. It's called Stay Strong. And it's a, more of a yoga song. Okay, so it, the legs are wide and we're just going to kind of go like this. Big circle. Every woman in this land. One arm. Stay Same strong. Other arm. Keep your faith alive. Same pattern. One Whoever arm. Comes Another arm. Us. Big circle. One arm. Stay strong. Keep your faith alive. Some say come. Big circle. Set our souls around. Stay strong, keep your faith alive. Let's all come together, take care of each other. Stay strong, keep your faith alive. Now we're going to raise our hands to the side. Watch. Raise your hands, raise your hands in the air. Here we go, one hand. And then hand side by side. With arms open wide. Stay strong, keep your faith alive. One arm. Help others find their way. Feel a heaven here today. Stay strong, keep your faith alive. Raise your hand.
keep your faith alive.